Hello new friends, my name is Nicola and welcome to the very first video in Piccola Makes where I share DIY projects and crafts with all of you. Today we are going to be upcycling old t-shirts into cute little throw pillows like this guy um, for you to keep in your home or your office or your car wherever you keep throw pillows like a normal person, probably your couch. I'm going to show you a couple techniques using a couple shirts so that you get some ideas for how to make this project really personal and unique to you and to the materials that you're using. Uh, but for now, just let's get started and talk about the materials we'll need to create these pillows. Okay, so you're gonna need some t-shirts, pins and thread, scissors, you'll need some zippers, uh, an embroidery hoop if you're gonna do any embroidery, some trim and extra yarn, whatever you're planning on using to decorate your project. You're also gonna want some scrap fabric to serve as a stabilizer because t-shirt fabric can be a little thin and tricky to work with. And finally, you'll need a pillow or a pillow form or just some sort of standard stuffing, cotton batting, something to fill out the shape of your pillow when you're done. So jumping right in, I thrifted this shirt for I think $2 from my local Goodwill. Uh, I love the design, but it's a little bit close to the collar of the shirt. So I'm going to cut it out uh, and you'll see what I do with it. So I'm just marking it out and then adding a little seam allowance before cutting the design off the front of the shirt. fabric I'm going to need from the back of the shirt. I'm going to go ahead and measure the pillow I'm planning on stuffing inside. I'm only cutting enough of the shirt for the front piece and I'll make the back of the pillowcase out of scrap fabric. Now because, it, as I said, jersey fabric is a little delicate to work with, I'm cutting out a piece of scrap fabric. This is just a cotton pillowcase and I'm cutting it to the same size as the uh, t-shirt fabric. I'm going to attach the stabilizing fabric and the t-shirt with fabric glue. If you have any fusible interfacing, I would recommend using that. that up nice and straight and I'm just dotting fabric glue all over the back piece attaching the front and then I'll iron the whole thing to help the glue set So next I want to find the center of my pillow in order to line up my graphic piece into the center. 
So I'm folding in half diagonally both ways uh, until I get that point, which I hit with the iron just so that I can see it when I unfold. And then I'll match up the center of my design with the center of the square. And time to pin it down so that I can sew the design piece onto the main fabric. I probably could have used about half as many pins as I did, but I did want to make sure everything stayed really flat. Uh, T-shirt fabric is a little slippery. Well, if you're confident using it, then you probably know how many pins you need already. You could also glue your patterned piece down to keep it from moving around. Um, I didn't want to add any extra bulk, so I went with the pins. Once I have the pins all set up, I'm going to mark the seam line that I want and go ahead and take it to the sewing machine. The original t-shirt had light blue thread on the seams and I really liked the contrast, so to keep that up, I'm using this light blue sewing thread. So once I've sewn the piece down, I'm gonna repin it just so that everything is flat again because I'm going to be sewing the same line around the interior design um, over and over again to create the sort of quilted effect that we're going for. And to make your life easy, you can line your presser foot up against the original seam and you'll get an even line of sewing every time. You can set the position of your needle to change how wide your lines are. Um, here I have it pushed all the way to the right, uh, so my stitches will be about 3 eighths of an inch apart. So I've gone around the design three times with stitches and I'm reaching the edge of that little pattern piece. So I'm going to pull out the pins and repin it again, uh, folding over the edge so that I can create a nice clean seam. I'm going to sew over this edge once with black thread and a very small zigzag stitch uh, just to keep everything secure, but then I'll go back over it with the light blue thread to continue my design, and in the end, you won't be able to see the black stitches holding the pattern piece onto the main piece. This is another place where fabric glue might be an easier solution, and honestly, if I'd thought of it at the time, I probably would have gone with it. I'm less familiar using fabric glue than I am sewing, so this is a case of sticking to what you know and making your project take 10 times longer as a result. Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine. If you take a look, you can see the edge of the pattern piece is sewed down with that really thin zigzag stitch. Uh, you might notice a few little tucks and pulls. You do want to avoid those, but the nice thing about working on black fabric is that you can't see anything when it's all done, unless you look really close. So I'm going to go around with lines again of the light blue thread and just repeat that process until I run out of pillow. I did this with separate lines each time around the circle, which meant I had to stop and start every time around. Uh, I didn't do any back stitching. I left a gap between the stop and start of each circle, which I then hand sewed in to keep it looking clean from the front. You can go around all in one big spiral if you don't want to deal with so many ends, and that can look really cool too. This stitching doesn't take too long and it's honestly really relaxing to just sort of trace a line around and around and around uh, and create this quilted cool effect. If you wanted to go even farther with the quilting, I think you could put a thin layer of batting behind your fabric.
continue out with your lines of stitches, you'll eventually hit the edges of your square. When you hit an edge, you'll just stop your machine, cut off the thread, and start again on the other side. This is going to generate a lot of ends around the edge of your piece, which will be a little bit annoying, but once you've sewn the front piece of the pillow to the back, those ends will all be pretty well captured and you can trim them off. Also, when you're doing the corners, remember you don't need to start right at the edge of the fabric and you don't need to backstitch. When you're sewing up the pillow, the ends should be tucked under the seam allowance and that should keep everything together. Okay, so apparently I didn't take any pictures of the front piece when it was all stitched. Uh, this is my first video, uh, so I do apologize. But the next step is to go ahead and attach it to the back. On this pillow, I'm adding this little pom-pom trim, so I'm pinning it down to the right side of the back piece with the pom-poms facing in. And then I'll add the panel piece and right sides together, also all the way around. And here's what it looks like all done. This one came out really cute. It's a variation on a design that I've done before. You'll see in the final shots another pillow that I did like this where I used complementary thread as opposed to contrasting, which gives a subtler look, and you'll see that at the end of the video. Okay, on to the next pillow. You'll see that I've added a bunch of embroidery to the front of this what used to be a t-shirt. Uh, unfortunately, I lost all that footage because I'm filming on my phone and yeah, no real excuse. This first bit, I'll show you how the pillow is constructed and then I've gone ahead and shot me doing the same embroidery on a piece of scrap. I'll show you after. It's basically the same process as before to construct it, only on this one, instead of removing my front design and attaching it to the back, I cut out the whole front piece, which left me with a long rectangle rather than a square. To square up my pillow and also add a little interest, I'm attaching bands of this faux leather to the top and bottom. This is something I had left over from another project. Uh, another fun thing about these pillows, they're a good way to use up random stuff you have lying around from old projects. So a bunch of measuring to make sure that my length and width are the same because once again this pillow is going to be a square. And sorry I kept falling out of the shot here. I promise next video I will learn how to frame my shots. To attach the leather pieces, you're going to pin them right sides together to your main piece and then sew a straight seam. I'm usually pretty lazy when it comes to pressing my seams, but on this one, because the leather fabric is so much heavier than the t-shirt fabric, I did go ahead and press these seams so that everything would lie flat when I was constructing the pillow. I didn't put a stabilizer behind the whole piece, but I did put a piece behind the heart embroidery just to give it a little extra heft since when you're doing that much embroidery on something, you do run the risk of making a hole. So there it is all sewn and pressed and now we're ready to build the rest of the pillow. I've got this hot pink zipper on here 
just for demonstration purposes. It's not the zipper I'll end up using, but I'm going to mime how I attach the zipper to the two side pieces of the back of the pillow in order to have this center zipper. There's also tons of tutorials online, of course, for how to insert a zipper. Uh, that will probably be, probably be more effective if this is your first time with a zipper than what I'm showing you here. But it'll give you a sense of how I built it anyway. I sewed the zipper onto the two pieces of the back. I did top stitch right along the edge of the zipper to make a nice clean line so it's not puckering the way you see it doing with the pins. And I sewed that all up to the front, right sides together, just like on the last pillow. Because I lost that footage of the embroidery, I do want to show you how I did the heart piece. Uh, also, I realize this is a terrible angle to film from, but these are the things that we learn as we go along. So I've drawn out a heart onto my piece of fabric and I've got it in an embroidery hoop nice and tight. I'm using a thin yarn. You are going to want to test whatever you're embroidering with and your needle and your fabric to make sure everything goes through smoothly. I did have a little trouble yanking this through. It's not the exact same yarn I used on the pillow, but it is the same weight. And again with the angles, I'm creating a woven pattern of stitches on this heart. So to start, I'm going to do long stitches horizontally across my design, leaving about the width of the yarn I'm using between each stripe, essentially. Now we're going to do the same thing going vertically, only instead of just making one long stitch across the design, you're going to weave your stitch back and forth through your horizontal lines. Be careful not to pull too tight, and you do want to sort of comb your stitches uh, to the whatever side you're coming from as you go along to keep everything neat and tidy. On both the vertical and the horizontal stitches, just make sure that your long stitch comes up from the bottom, across, and back down through the top, and that the short stitches that are on the back come down through the top, across, and up through the bottom again. Once I've got my heart all woven, I'm going to go around with a border stitch to clean up the edge. This is a pretty simple stitch uh, and I will try to show you what I'm doing. So you're going to come up from the back and make a small stitch and pull it most of the way through. You're going to make your next stitch in the middle of the stitch you just made and along the same line and then pull the whole thing tight. So you make your regular running stitch, come back up through the middle, and pull your stitch taut. What this is going to do, because you're coming up through the same line, is sort of offset the bottom of each stitch so you get kind of 
a woven look. So here's a quick graphic of how these stitches work in case that's more clear than my explaining. So you have the red stitch first, you see it goes up through the fabric, back down again. Blue is your second stitch, so you'll come up again in the middle of the red stitch, make that stitch the same length, and then come up again through the blue stitch, that's the orange one, make that one the same length, and so on. And you'll do that all the way around the heart. Here's what the pillow looks like all together. The faux leather blocking is a little thin. If I were doing it again, I'd definitely make it more significant. And then for the embroidery, you saw how to do the heart around the letters. I just did a simple back stitch in black yarn around all the letters. And that's this pillow. So back in the intro, I showed you a white pillow with embroidery on it. That is not technically a t-shirt upcycle. I had the pillow already, but it was kind of old and it had some stains on it. I used a little embroidery to cover up the stains and give it new life. And this is a fun thing you can do to any sort of plain looking pillow or an old shirt. Embroidery can give new life to basically anything. These are the stitches that I used on that pillow. Their names will pop up now. The top one is a chain stitch. Next is a pom-pom that is sewn on. On the bottom you have what is essentially a fly stitch. And the last one, the star, is just regular straight stitches and then a French knot in the center. I'm not going to show you how I did each of these stitches because I'm probably not the best person to teach you embroidery. But thankfully we have the internet and YouTube and you can find tutorials for any of these, I'm sure. You can also, of course, do your own stitches, make things up, whatever floats your boat and make sense with your upcycle. To do these on my white pillow, I sketched out very lightly where I was going to do each kind of stitch and then after sewing it up, ran it through the washer to get all the pencil marks out. You'll see the pom-poms are a little poofier on the pillow than on my embroidery swatch here and that's because they did go through the laundry. So if you want a sort of more relaxed looking pom-pom, just make sure you don't run it through the wash, basically. And here's the final pillow. This is actually the original pillow that inspired this whole video. I sort of made it on a whim when I couldn't get the stains out of the pillow and just thought it was so cute, I couldn't stop. So that's my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you liked it, please give it a like and let me know what kind of videos you might be interested in the future. That's all for me and this episode of Pickle and Makes. I'll see you next time. Bye! tips, tricks, etc. Um, it is hard to do one take, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, new friends.